The last time I saw you, John, was in Salt Lake City when Leon Edwards hit that incredible head kick knockout of Kamaru Usman. And just to kind of set the stage a little bit, <laughs> working for BT Sport at that time, I'm getting ready to post the Kamaru Usman winner's graphic, right? The, the fifth round has started. I'm like, all right, well, I can see exactly where this fight is headed. Leon does his thing knocks him out. I'm able to absorb it for about 20 seconds. I look at my colleagues. We all have our, you know, mouths wide open, jaws hitting the floor. And then we realize, oh yes, we have about six hours of incredible work to do to amplify this moment as much as we can on social media. And it was only a few hours later until I was able to actually go back and really hear the call that you guys provided for that moment. And then I remember running into you at the Fighters Hotel and you kind of just said that this is one of the best calls we've ever done. And now that it's been well, coming up to a year later, when you look back and reflect on that moment, where does that stand in terms of the all-time calls you've made for some of the biggest moments in the UFC? Well, thank you, man. It's nice to have an answer for that question. I would always say, you know, Brisbane, Australia, 2013, if you didn't see the heavyweight fight between Mark Hunt and Antonio Bigfoot Silva, you need to go back and watch that fight. Or Rose Namajunas knocking out Ioana Yeo and Jacek the first time those two fought at Madison Square Garden. For me, in a broad sense, every time somebody who is not a UFC champion becomes a UFC champion, those are the greatest moments for me as a UFC fan. And I'm sure you appreciate and agree with a lot of that sentiment, whether it's Brandon Moreno or Jan Bohovic, but Leon Edwards takes the cake for me professionally and in terms of just new champions breaking through the manner in which he did it. The call is certainly secondary to the manner in which he did it. But yes, I mean, I was not aware not unlike yourself, after the fight happened, I had no idea that I had just said that right before he had landed that actual kick. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've said this a lot, but I just felt like at that point in time, this whole moral victory narrative just did not dovetail with who Leon Edwards is or was, and it took him forever to get this fight. His whole career, he had just been so criminally underappreciated that no, like this is not the moral victory guy. Like he's not that guy. So when I heard it again, and it wasn't even necessarily one of my broadcast partners who was suggesting it at that point in time, as much as they were just <clears throat> bringing it up that we had talked about it earlier, and it just sort of stuck in me. And I was like, yeah, but like, that's just not the cloth from which this dude is cut and then bang, right? But it's like, Leon Edwards doesn't give a rip about a moral victory. And that's the only point I was trying to make. Got lucky with the timing. And I will tell you, you know, Dana White, it's hard to get his praise. You know, he came up to me on stage at the weigh-in in advance of the rematch as the footage was playing. And he was like, dude, that's the best call of your career. And I was like, yeah, you know, you better be lucky and good. And he's like, no, but, you know, you throw enough out there and you hit one like that. And uh, it, to hear that from the boss was like uh, meant the world to me. So, uh, yeah, it's cool, man. You know, I'm, I feel forever linked to Leon and happy to, you know, be a, a, some small part of a, a memory that he and his family will always enjoy. Thanks for watching this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. And hey, do me a favor, hit the like button, drop a comment, give me some feedback, let me know what you think. Share the video with your friends, help me blow this whole thing up. And hey, if you really enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more conversations, more interviews and more amazing video content coming soon.